Hi guys, this is Wendy Day. I have the amazing Deborah Manis Gardner with me. Deborah Man Manis Gardner has been clearing samples for over two decades and, and she started at five years old, so she's really not that old. I don't wanna make her seem old. But today we're gonna to talk about producers and how producers get paid. Deborah, thank you so much for doing this. I love it's you. It's a pleasure. You know, we need to uh, do some more education and yes. advice for the producers. I think they are um, forgotten. I think they're taken advantage of. Right. And I think it's really exciting that we're able to spend time to um, educate and make this and help uh, them. So, uh, specifically for the producers. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me ask you the question that everyone is here for. How do producers get paid? Stop giving your shit away for free. <laughs> Amen. So <clears throat> as a producer, you know, it's like a business. You're not just making beats, but it's, it's a business and you need to remember that. So the first thing I'm going to say to you is to create song sheet splits so that when someone comes into your studio to record something or if you're going to submit a beat to someone, that you've determined what those splits are for that song. So even if there's an unknown artist that has a whole bunch of your beats that you want him to be able to pick from, you're going to send paperwork to him saying, I'm going to own 50% of the song because you're using my beat. You have the other 50% for whatever you wrap on top of it. And should that change, then we'll negotiate at that time. Starting with a piece of paper with, uh, with a split, a song split sheet, is a good way to, to start a paper trail. Beautiful. You submit that with the, with the beat, and you make sure they sign off or submit it to them before you send the beat and have them sign off on it. There's no exchange of, of, of money necessarily at that time, but there's an acknowledgement, a paper trail showing that you're going to own 50% of that song on the publishing side. So it's the intention the intention it's to start your paper trail and guys i'll put a link to a split sheet down below this video oh so you okay so you've got that for them yeah excellent and so it's your job as a producer you running a business you're not just making beats you're running a business you're doing this to make a living and to grow that business so this is this is the the, the start of it then when you give out these beats or you start sending beats to artists you should be doing contracts. And I don't know if we want to create a boilerplate contract or how we want to handle this, but you need to do a contract of some sort. <clears throat> is there compensation? You know, I'm assuming that you're going to get paid for it. This contract is not going to be a work for hire. It's not a flat fee. You want to make sure that, again, it reflects that you're going to own a piece of that copyright, including, on the master side, a royalty. You're saying, I'm not going to charge you a royalty at this time, but should this get picked up for distribution or should this, that, the other happen, that you're going to get a royalty and get compensated for it. Beautiful. It's you showing good faith that you're not asking for anything now. You believe in this artist. You're glad that they're getting a beat from you. But if that artist takes off, you should take off with that artist. Absolutely. And see you. That's all it is. You're, you're not holding a gun to their head and you're not asking for them anything now. You're asking for something down the road. You're asking this for something when there is something. And it's establishing a paper trail. And, you know, if you've got a team or someone with you, you need to push on getting that paperwork signed. Okay? So once you've established this paperwork and you've got that beat out there, um, so if it's someone that you're just doing a favor and you, you know, do it for 10 or $20 to at least give it a value. Again, you could say, well, I'm giving you this beat for $20, but again, if you get picked up, then there'll be a back end due to me. Right. What you know, three hundred, five hundred, or thousand, or what have you, to show I believe in you, and we've got good faith. But that I want to receive revenue when you receive revenue. Exactly. I think that's important. You need to be responsible and remember who you've given beats out to. I think that the biggest problem producers do is they use samples, they create beats, they kind of forget, they don't label things. You know what? You know how to use your computer. You know how to use, uh, you know, all these programs. You've got metadata, make the notes in the metadata as if it's got a sample in it, what you sampled it, and make a note in the metadata if you've given it to someone. And don't double sell a beat. I just went through that with someone really big who tried to screw my artist, out of, my client out of $50,000, and I busted him. Good for you. It, it happens all the time here in Atlanta. I can't tell you how many local 
well-known established producers oh, my clients what... have bought tracks from and then all of a sudden it, you hear Future's album and it's there. You hear Migos and it's there. You hear Juicy J, it's there. It's the track that you bought. Let's not also forget that there are guys out there, and it's probably you, that are selling beats on these websites and you're doing this non-exclusive license and then I use Shazam I and I hear your beat in like 20 different songs. Yeah, I, I, I hate and, that. And then that person registers that song and you got zero writer credit, zero publishing credit, and they just now stole your beat because right. it's part of the game. Right. And there's nothing you can do about it. So stop selling your beats on these websites for these non-exclusive $300 deals because exactly. you're getting fucked. You're, getting, you're so, getting fucked, absolutely. And and as a marketer, if I have a beat that's leased, I can't put money behind it. I can't work a beat that's leased because it's it, it could show up on anybody else's album. It's just it's not it's not worth it to me. So a leased beat, I won't even I won't even fuck with that producer. Right. So you you've got to you know you've got to reevaluate that. You know, if you want to create a site with your beats um, so that they're good for licensing for film and television at low rates. That's, that's a great idea. Because <clears throat> they're not going to take your beat and incorporate it into something else. They're going to use it as is and use it as a background um, for use in film or television, and you still own your beat, and it's used in its purest form. That's a great idea to start a website because it's so inexpensive to set up a functional website today. That's that's yeah. a fabulous idea. So as a producer, there's, there's a lot of stuff that you need to be responsible for, or you need to have a manager, or you need to have someone on your team that looks after this stuff for you. It's great that you want to just make beats, but you need to be responsible for the beat that you're making because I'm assuming you make beats not just for the fun of it, but to make money. Right. And Can so producers need... make a lot of money Absolutely. In this business? Not only do they make a lot of money, but then they become artists. Look at The Dream. Look at DJ Mustard. Right. Look, Look at, at Metro Boomin right now. They all, they all started as producers. And, you know, I'm not saying many of these producers should be artists because I don't think they should. But... Um, as producers, these publishers absolutely offer lucrative uh, publishing deals. Absolutely, they do. Awesome. I'm glad and you mentioned that. Um, I'm, I'm not a fan of publishing deals, so I'm going to ask you to speak to the positive side of publishing deals because these guys have heard me for months now saying that I don't like publishing deals, that they should keep ownership and get an admin deal. But if you've got some thoughts on why a publishing deal would benefit them, I would welcome you to talk about it. I'm not necessarily keen on a big publishing deal unless you really need a lot of money. And then are you prepared to never recoup? Because I don't know how many poverty stories I'm hearing of these guys who get the, get that they get those advances, spend it, and now they're not seeing any money because they never recouped. Right. And that's that that's a big problem for a lot of these guys. Absolutely. And well, doesn't the um and, and this is fucked up because now I'm going negative. I'm going anti-pub deal. But don't the publishers own that split of the song forever? No. It varies on the contract. You know, when we, when my partner administered Faith Evans, we, with the help of her attorney, got her publishing, a lot of her publishing back out of Puffy's deal and Sony ATV and it reverted back to her. Nice. And it was with, yeah, then she screwed us and she brought it to BMG, so... But that's okay. awesome that you were able to, <laughs> I might need to edit this, <laughs> but that's awesome that you got to like get that back because that's the value. Like publishing is to me, it's like land. It's the ownership and you never give your land away. You might sell your land. You might lease your but, land. But, but, but that's what people did. They, they, they sold the locks. I mean, they did, they, they, they sold their land. They can't get their publishing back. Right. They the contract. They can't. So they, 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 you know, Jadakus, I mean, I don't know how many times he's been screwed by people left and right. You know, being that ghostwriter, and as a ghostwriter, he got $10,000 here and $10,000 there. We no know. ownership. No ownership. We all know Jadakus was a ghostwriter. Please. Right. Really? We all know who he wrote for. Right. And you can hear it in the songs. <laughs> you can hear it. Ditto Nas. <laughs> Ditto Jay-Z. Right. I mean, he's, he's a brilliant writer, right. you know? Um... And so, 
I say, please think, 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 think about the stuff before you, you know, take ten thousand dollars and and give away something, um, and, unless you're in jail and you need bail money. I don't know. I mean, it's it's really this this is your bread and butter, and this is your future, and this is what you need to to hold on to. Um, and you need to be smart, and you need to ask questions, and uh, and and hopefully I'll start doing a lecture circuit so I can advise uh, you producers. Um, to understand how to do things. You want to be a producer, you need to be responsible, and you need to set up your company properly. And that's your responsibility and job as a producer, not to just make beats, but to understand what that entails in making beats. I love that. Yeah, it's it's a business, and you said it, you said it best. You know, um, my take on it is that producers are a brand, and their goal is to build that brand and get as many placements as they can on music that will that will last for you know for life so that not only will they get to eat but their children and their children's children and their children's children's children will get to eat you know and that's the whole point of the music industry i mean think about what publishing and songs have been around um as long as it has and um, you know after the, the world of uh, you know when public domain and then stuff isn't public domain this music just continues on and on, and our laws in the United States, a song has a, has a good life to it. You know, in other countries, songs might only have a 50-year uh, lifespan or a 70-year lifespan, but it, under U.S. copyright law, I think songs have a, have a nice lifespan where you right. can really uh, make some, generate some good revenue. Exactly. I think right now it's life plus 75 years, isn't it? It's yeah. some, it's, it's, it's good, you know, I, you know, I'm glad you mentioned that about other countries because producers also need to be able to collect their money from other countries, whether it's from the performing rights organizations in other countries or sales, you know, overseas, um, they need to have somebody on board that can actually collect their, their money for them. That's well, that's why they need publishing and publishing administration because the publisher will have sub publishing in other territories to collect that money for them. Right. And then any producers, you know, if you do anything outside the United States, um, you know, besides you collecting on the artist side, the master side of things, you know, you're going to get a royalty. Um, if you do anything, if you produce anything outside the United States, um, you can then collect on neighboring rights as well. Nice. I don't even know if you touched on that, but neighboring rights. No, I haven't. United States not signed the Rome Convention, so you start asking yourself, oh, well, why did Kanye or Jay-Z record in France? Or why does uh, Santa Gold record in, um, in, in Jamaica? It's because of neighboring rights. Once you, um, you know, I was even trying to say, well, why, should, why is it Marshall in Canada? But I got a, an answer why. But, you know, because he's you know, being so close, isn't there a bridge now for him to do it? Right. You know, yeah, but he can't. But, <laughs> but if you go to Canada, even... It, it, it's outside the territory of the United States. You qualify for neighboring rights, and that's why you know Drake has kept his studio, and he can you know make sure he records everything in, in Canada. Canada. In Canada, absolutely. Brilliant. So um, those are things that producers should think about as well. So if you're ever traveling and you're abroad and you make a beat outside the United States, make sure you make a record of you know make a notation of that. Of that as well in the metadata qualifies for neighboring rights. Excellent. Which is additional revenue. Right. It's more money. Right. Right. Need more. And and that's what we're talking about. We're talking today about how producers make money. Make money. And and you know, there's a lot of ways to make money. You have to uh, you know, maybe we'll just create a how to for you guys. I don't know. I mean you That's as a great idea. You know, you as producers, you need to uh, take a more uh, aggressive role. You I think you are screwed more than anyone Anybody. Right? Absolutely. Because you can't just go and get shows. You know, as I work with artists, the first income to come in is always show money because we give all the music away for free. And mm -hmm. the producer can't go and do shows the way that rappers can. And they're always the last to get paid. It's, it's very frustrating. If in, in the case of a major label, the artist has to recoup really before you get the rest of your money. So you've got to really focus on your mechanical royalties and your publishing. It's important to understand how this works. And, you know, there's, yeah, because look at Swiss Beats. He was self-published by NASA up until just a month ago, and he just joined Reservoir. 
And, you know, because she was having a hard time chasing after um, his publishing and getting artist royalties. It, right. just, it, it wasn't going smoothly. Um, I believe Reservoir handles both sides of that now. They can handle artist royalties as well and producer royalties as well as publishing. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah, they, they've been buying um, labels, um, Master okay. Cat, Cat as well. So I think they're now, Smart. I think Rel has set that up so that they can do that as well. So, um, I mean, look at him. He has been self-published. How long has he been doing this, Swiss? God, 25 plus years. He, <laughs> DMX, since DMX. No, 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 not Swiss Beats. It's Just Blaze. Excuse me, mm. not Swiss Beats. Swiss Beats is from Universal. It's Just Blaze. Just Blaze. So, just Blaze. let's see. Just Blaze was the engineer when David Banner was recording gray skies so he went from being an engineer to being a producer so he's been doing it at least since 98 99 somewhere in there right okay so he just went with reservoir wow a couple of faith newman just signed him over amazing and so a lot of these guys you know scott storage he just went to reservoir as well you know he's cleaned up and he's he's starting to work again yeah he's starting to um do some big stuff i've noticed he's been hitting exactly. my feed lately yeah, yeah, he's starting to do stuff again as well. So these producers, again, as a producer, get your shit together. Right, be business people. Be or get business. somebody on your team that is. Right. Again. Not, and know your strengths and weaknesses. Look at, the, look at the dream. The dream is, you know, represented by Thea Settemeyer. He is, his management is Rock Nation, and his publishing is Warner Chapel. Right. Um, DJ Mustard, isn't he with Reservoir also, or is he with Song? No, I he's with know. Song. He's with song. He's with Songs Publishing, which is a small boutique, but up and growing because they've got huge financial backing. Exactly, and, and it's run by Barry Weiss, who's been in the industry for you know longer than me, and I'm at 25 years, yeah, so he's probably at 30 or 35 years in the music business. Yeah, and, and DJ Mustard's there. So, and look, look what he's doing now. Yeah, very impressive. Yeah, I just like to make jokes about his name. You mentioned <laughs> Ketchup right again, but um. <laughs> So these producers, so again, they're being business people, you know, and that's what you have to be. You have to be a right. business person. You have to be. It's the music business. It's not, it's not fun. I mean, it's, it's passion and it's art and it's enjoyable and it's flashy, but more than anything, it's a business, you know, you've got well, just, to treat it like, so, like that. Just the fact that Rock Nation as, as, as a management company is managing producers as yes. much as a managing artist. It, that should tell you something it right there. It shows you, exactly. Exactly, definitely, definitely. And the last thing I want to touch on, if you don't mind, um, we're going to do a whole program about music supervisors, but if you could touch on the fact that producers could get paid by placing music um, into TV and games and film, that would be wonderful. Yeah, I mean, producers, you know, I have a producer that I work with, um, uh, Wayne Brown from The Watchmen out of out of Harlem, New York, and um, he makes beats. And you know he works with uh, Nobody down out of Florida. Uh, no was the one who uh, discovered Akon and worked with the Steve Griffin Company right. and stuff like that. He and, actually found um, David Banner. He was the one that brought David Banner to Steve Rifkin when I did oh, his deal. Okay. Nobody's so, awesome. So I'm sorry. He's awesome. Nobody is awesome. Yeah. So, Wayno um, is always pitching beats and working. This, he's one of the hardest working guys I know in the industry. He's up at 6 in the morning making wow. beats until 11 o'clock at night. He lived under my roof for a year doing that. He, maybe two years. Always just making beats, pitching stuff and making beats. But because he's got this huge library, when again, when I needed music replaced for a film... We were able to take these beats, these songs, these music, whether it was instrumental or was able to add lyrics or vocals, be able to reach out to this, this girl that he works with and say, hey, could you add some vocals here? I need something to replace a Beyonce song. He was able to get like, you know, eight cues in a film. So wow. nice. what we decided is to set something up where he would become like a, uh, like a music library um, as a producer so that his beats, hits would be available um, for TV. And and that and it's not a and for film, so it's not a lot of money. You know your beats that you get as a producer, what five thousand, ten thousand, up to twenty thousand, depending what your level is, as a producer. These beats, when you offer for TV or for film, can range from one thousand to five thousand. Still great money. It's great money, yeah, absolutely. And you're not losing ownership, so that beat can go do something else later on. And it's not exclusive. 
So that right. beat can be used over and over and over and over and over That's again. Great so again, there is so much you could be doing as a producer to, uh, to, to make money. You have to think like a business person. And so I think, uh, I think producers, what Wendy and I are saying is maybe we need to, um, come up with something or maybe come down to Atlanta or go out and do, uh, lectures for you producers to get a better understanding of what we need to do yes. and get organized. Artists are organized, labels are organized, publishers are organized. We need to organize the producers. I agree. Because without producers, there'd be no music and no beats. None. None. And so I think the producers need to be organized and we need to do something about it. I agree. <laughs> We're going to union, Kimberly, union thank the producers. you so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay, guys, this is Wendy Day. This is Deborah Manis Gardner here. And you can find her at DMG Clearances. Dot com. Deborah, thank you again for joining us. I love you to death, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Thank you.